I thought us blessed with long life, and I pitied the humans whose time in the universe seemed fleeting in my eyes. But that was before we got to know them, before we came to consider them friends. Never before had individuals from another race found their way so swiftly to the depths of my heart, but I can see without hesitation that it is my human friends who are dearest to me. So eager are they to share every aspect of their lives with me, and even more willing to indulge in mine. They find the barest of similarities or the smallest of shared interests, and before you know it, they have become a permanent fixture in your life. We privileged races at times joke that the humans seem immortal with how rationally capable they are of surviving, and even thriving in the worst of circumstances. But though I have no doubt that their race will endure into eternity, we who are gifted with several of their lifetimes are all too familiar with how much of an illusion that aura of invincibility truly is. Our sense of time is warped in relation to our lives, and in the early years of our friendships with the humans, we made the critical mistake of not cherishing the time we had with them more. Fifty years were passed by quickly for us, but for our human friend the toll was great. No longer could they move the way they used to. No longer could they endure the hardships of adventure as they previously had. The desire never died, of course, and they adapted their technologies more and more to allow themselves to relive the glory days of their youth, when it felt like nothing could stop them. But time is cruel to humans, and technology could only do so much and take them only so far. Before we knew it, our vibrant young friends grew old. Their hair speckled with grey and white. Their backs a bit more hunched, their steps a bit slower. But they were still as vibrant as the day we met. As full of fire and passion as when they bounded across unfamiliar landscapes without a shred of fear in their hearts. Yet their bodies would not allow it. Would not let them continue to follow their passions as they used to. Slowly cutting off more and more of the life they reveled in. The day my first human friend died, I laughed because I thought it was a joke. We had been pulled apart by occupation and obligation, but kept in touch through messages and videos, even if we couldn't see each other face to face. There was no way that this incredible person, who I had stood in a room with a mere 20 years ago, was dying. But the nurse would call me assure me this was no joke, and then my friend had asked the hospital to reach out so I could be there in her final moments. After several moments of being unable to process any of this, I dropped my communicator, without even hanging up, and broke several interplanetary laws to get to my friend's side as fast as I possibly could. I still couldn't believe it, and I was praying that this was some kind of twisted joke, some prank that I would definitely scold her for ages for, but at least be relieved that she was fine. But when I finally stood in front of the hospital, it struck me how unreasonable that hope was. I knew my friend, and she would never have done something this cruel. With each step I took into the facility, the more I felt myself breaking. My voice shook violently as I asked the nurse at the front desk what room my friend was in, and by the time I stood in front of the door, I was already in tears. But when I laid eyes on her, it completely broke me. Her hair, once a bright red, was now all white. Her face, full of wrinkles, and she looked so small and frail. But her smile was the same. Untouched by the ravages of time, as her eyes met mine and it slowly spread across her face. I all but threw myself at a hospital bed, and openly wept like a child as I buried my face into her shoulder, or she quietly stroked my hair and held me in those thin, weak arms. I felt ashamed that she had wanted me to be there for her, but here she was comforting me instead. But she didn't complain. Not once. We sat there, just holding each other, until I finally regained the ability to speak without sobbing, and began to catch up. I wanted to hear everything she had to say, wanted to sear every word she said and move she made into my memory, because I knew that after today I would never be able to hear her voice again, never be able to feel the warmth of her embrace or see the rich life sparkling in her eyes. Eventually she got too tired to continue, and asked if I would just hold her hand while she got some sleep. We both knew she wasn't going to wake up again, but neither of us wanted to openly acknowledge it. So I simply nodded and clasped her hand in mine, trying to memorise every detail of her face so I would never forget it. I sat there as she drifted off, and held my breath every time it seemed like she had taken her last one. I lived and died between every beat of her heart, every pulse against my fingers, every rise and fall of her chest, and when it all finally stopped. 
I cried tears I didn't know I had left. I let out silent screams that threatened to burst my lungs, and my heart felt like it was tearing itself into pieces. Never before had I experienced loss like this. Never had I had something so precious yet so fleeting without knowing it, and all I could think was how much time I had wasted, how much time I could have made for her, if I had only known it would end like this. To anyone reading this, I beg of you to learn from my mistake. Cherish your human friends, love them with every bit of your heart, and never leave time with them unspent. Because someday they will be gone. And all you'll have left are the memories of the short, wonderful life they chose to share with you.